Well, good morning. Good to see you here with us at Hardison Baptist Church. Nice to see your smiling faces. Take your hymn book. Turn to 351. 351. Let's, when you find your spot, if you can, stand with us. We'll sing all four verses of Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. <clears throat> What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought Since Jesus came into my heart I have light in my soul for which long I had sought Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, I have ceased from my wandering and going astray. Since Jesus came into my heart, and my sins, which were many, are all passed away. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure. Since Jesus came into my heart, and no dark clouds of doubt now my pathway obscure. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, I shall go there to dwell in that city I know. Since Jesus came into my heart, and I'm happy, so happy as onward I go. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. Well, amen. It's good to be here this morning. Good. Y'all singing out, smiling. Amen. Good Sunday school this morning. I counted how many was in there, but the room was just about full. And, uh, but I forgot the number, so, <laughs> so it didn't really matter. I don't know why I can't. How many? Are you praising the Lord, sister, or are you trying oh, to? <laughs> we counted here. We had 20. Okay, I saw you do that. I thought 20. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm picking at you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good Sunday school. The lesson was good. Good crowd in there this morning. Amen. About time to bust that class up now. I'm getting too big, and then we need to put them in them. We need to utilize those little rooms upstairs. So, but uh, anyway, no, I'm, I'm teasing. Good, good job, though, this morning, Brother Bryant. Thank you. I appreciate everybody that was able to be here this morning. It's good to be here this morning in God's house. Brother Charles, how about you pray for us this morning, brother? Hello, Father. We do thank you for our time when we can be in your house praising your Lord, praising your name and all, Father. And we just thank you that everybody that's been able to be here and the ones who were not, Father, we just ask that you heal them and bring them back to us soon and all, Father. And just be with Brother Jim as he gives us a message uh, this morning that we'll be able to go out and share it with someone. Amen. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm sorry. Uh, you can be seated as far as uh, announcements, a couple of things. I appreciate the ladies that went. I think it was seven went yesterday up to uh, the ladies meeting yesterday in Molina. Uh, but I, they came back really encouraged and had a good time, good fellowship in the Lord up there and good edification. Uh, but anyway, appreciate them. We appreciate the Lord getting them up there safely, bringing them back safely. Uh, not as you know, the table to set this morning, Lord's Supper. We'll be having communion service this morning, 
and uh, looking forward to that. Always a special time, isn't it? And we, we sure need to make it and uh, see to it that it is a special time. Um, and of course, evening service tonight, six o'clock. Um, Tuesday night, we'll be hosting Preachers, Middle Georgia Preachers Fellowship. I mentioned a little bit about it Wednesday night, but everybody that's here wasn't here Wednesday night. So let me just explain real quickly, because a lot of folks th may think it's something that just preachers getting together, but it's church service. We're hosting it. We're, uh, it's, it's a group of, uh, well, all together probably could be as many as 35, but that many usually is not able to make it to a meeting. Usually it's uh, 12 to 15, sometimes 20 uh, preachers and their families, pastor, most of them, some of them are evangelists, some of them are preachers, such as Brother Bryant, that's a faithful member here, so, so there'll be a lot of guys that are uh, lay preachers, I guess we'd say, and, and, but most of them will be pastors that pastor churches, majority of them uh, churches this size and smaller. It's two or three pretty good sized churches in there, but I'm just saying there's guys that's laboring that, that know what is uh, uh, facing the battles we face here at Hardison, you know what that battle is, the devil. And all, and they just need encouragement. It's our opportunity to just kind of reach out, uh, bring them here. Two guys are going to preach for us. Going to be a good service, good preaching. I was carefully selected who I wanted to preach for you, and I'm excited about the meetings. I just hope everybody can make it a priority to pr try to be here if you're able. I know some's got previous plans to be traveling. And all I understand that, but but boy, I just want to encourage you to please try to be here. And then, of course, Wednesday night we'll have a regular service, and. Um, and not as well, but anyway, I just wanted to stress that. And please come if you would. And and I know the ladies have all talked about uh, food and those things. They they do that. The ladies' meetings. And they get together for that purpose. They can plan to do these type things. So uh, if you, if you don't know what you can bring, ask one. Ask my wife. She can tell you what to bring. Or if you want to bring something, a dessert or something. Uh, but anyway, be feeding the preachers, following the meals. When I'm speaking of there, uh, of course, next week's Mother's Day. Amen. So, fellas, y'all better get to academy. <laughs> Amen. All right. Uh, got a lot on the prayer list, y'all. Look over the prayer list. There's some copies out there. I do want to mention Miss Kathy. Uh, be praying for her. Uh, she's uh, having the problems recurred again today. That um, she's not uh, wasn't able to be here today. And uh, I just want to praise the Lord for something. I, I hope this person doesn't mind me. I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot. But sister, seeing you singing with a smile on your face, holding that baby, what a miracle. I mean, what a blessing. And just praise God. That's just uh, very encouraging. But praise God for his goodness. He sure, he sure is an awesome God, isn't he, this morning. Well, Brother Bryant, come on, lead us in a couple of good songs there, brother. All right, 294. 294. We'll sing all three verses of Blessed Redeemer. Such woe that he but 
singing 679 you may remain seated for this one we've got one more congregational we'll we'll stand and sing it but 679 tis so sweet to trust in jesus tis so sweet to trust in jesus just to take him at his word Just to rest upon His promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, Oh, for grace to trust Him more. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust Him, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that He is with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Amen. Amen. 308. 308 when you find your spot stand with me if you can and we'll sing nothing but the blood 308 what can what 
wash away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other pound I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon, this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing, this my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. That makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Children, you are dismissed at this time. Good to have our guests with us this morning. Appreciate y'all being here. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Christopher had a blowout. I know it. <laughs> Boy, I'm going to tell you what, that was precious, wasn't it? It was worth pausing. I just thought we'd just take you in the moment. That was precious. Little children. What a blessing. I'm going to tell you what, that's encouraging. I didn't get a count through there. And I'm not all about numbers. Don't misunderstand me now. But when God's moving, you see things happen. You see more. That's something to be excited about. But uh, every, what the number was, praise God for that little old crowd of Little young'uns to go back here and hear something about Jesus that died on the cross for their sins one day. Um, y'all turn to Hebrews chapter 13 this morning. Wow, I can't believe we sang four songs and uh that all the things we've done, and it's not even quite 20 after yet. <laughs> so I kind of plan on preaching kind of a, well, my brother Bryant said don't say it, because then I violate it and I'll preach 45 minutes. But realize we do have the Lord's Supper. I do want to be wise with our time this morning. And, uh, but, but, Rest assured, I've got about five extra points up here that I can continue on if I get through too early. I can fill the, fill the clock, I promise you. Hebrews chapter 13. Uh, stand with me. It's, it's tempting just to read the whole passage, but I'm not going to ask you to stand up that long. Hebrews 13, 
I know we've, we've exercised your knees and hips and all this morning. If you're able to stand, please do it. And if you're not, God knows that, and, and we understand that. Hebrews 13, I'm going to start reading at verse 5. The Bible says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Wow, we could just stop and hang around right there for about 30 minutes and be good, wouldn't it? So that the Lord may boldly say, the Lord is my help. I mean, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do. Remember them, uh, remember them which have the rule over you, who have, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose, whose faith follow considering the end of their conversation. Just mean faithful to the end. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Be not cared about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat, which serve the tabernacle. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Now he's referring back to the sacrifices of under the law that we talked about, Brother Bryant talked about in Sunday school this morning. He's talking about those sacrifices made, and he brings it down that they burn them outside of the camp, and then they brought them in for those sacrifices. It says, wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. They took him out of the city and he was crucified up on the hillside there of Golgotha, wasn't he? So it was burned without, uh, without the camp, without the gate outside. Verse 13, let us go therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his approach. For here... Have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come? For by, I mean, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Verse 15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. If someone were to walk up to you and ask you, what's the greatest possession you have? And I know an inanimate object may, I was at a fellow's house the other day, and, and he said, uh, you can be seated. And he he said, somehow fishing came up, and he said, let me show you this fishing pole. And he went back, t took me back into a room and dug around the closet and got this case out and showed me this. i have never seen one like it. I can't remember the brand name, uh, but it was an amazing old fishing pole. The reel was made in handle, like custom made, probably in the 30s, beautiful work of art that his daddy had handed to him. And I mean, that's precious to him. And we might all have things that are precious to, in our, to us in our lives. It uh, might be a pocket knife, ladies. It might be a ring that belonged to a loved one or somebody and, and all that. But truly, the most precious possession we have is our salvation, isn't it? So the real answer, no matter what in it, what thing we may have or stuff we might have that might be great things to us and certainly mean a lot to us nothing wrong with that and I mean there's a difference in and and caring about something and worshiping that isn't it there's a difference there but but our real truly greatest things we have as Christians is our salvation what makes it so great well the the price is paid for it the precious blood of Jesus Christ Let's go ahead and pray. I want to preach on continual sacrifice this morning. Let's, let's pray. Father, I pray that you'd help us this morning. God, I thank you for, this, for each one's here. I thank you specifically and especially for our guests this morning. Lord, I thank you for our home folk that's here this morning. I thank you for the ones who've gone in back to help the little ones and teach them along. Lord, I thank you for all the little ones that are here today. God, I pray that you'd help me to preach truth. Lord, it would be challenged to our hearts this morning before we 
receive the Lord's Supper as a local church. God, I pray that you'd work in our midst. God, number one, if there's, if there's someone here today that's not saved, God, I pray that you'd work mightily in that heart, Lord, and that, Lord, that uh, through the preaching of the Word, working of the Holy Spirit of God, Lord, that you would work in their heart, Lord, that they might realize their lost condition, might turn to you and get saved. And then, Lord, for those that are saved already this morning, I pray that you'd work in each of our hearts this morning, God, that we would take heed. Lord, we'd have a desire, Lord, after all that you've done for us, to be willing to make some sacrifice. God, help me to preach truth this morning. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. Okay, we've read Hebrews 13, verse 5 through 6, and we read that, and, and we see there some things and kind of out of the old things of the Old Testament and the end with the new that Christ has died for us and that precious blood is shed, and it goes on, and, and uh, in verse 12 says, Wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate, and let us go therefore into, unto him in, without the camp, bearing his repro reproach, uh, but it goes on, and uh, there's, a, there's a pattern you'll see of uh, expectation from us, and we'll talk about a few of those in a minute. But right now, put a marker there, if you would, or a piece of paper or something, and your ribbon, whatever you got there handy. And uh, turn back a couple of pages to Hebrews chapter 10. Let's just read just a little bit more and glance at it with the subject this morning being the Lord's Supper. In uh, Hebrews chapter 10, and I'm going to start at verse 7, Hebrews chapter 10, and in, in verse 7, the Bible says, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, uh, I, to do thy will, O God. Now, there's some quoting in, that, in these couple of verses from Psalm 40, uh, verses 6, 7, 8, long through there. But, but you know, Christ, uh, man, the whole book's about it. That, that's, what the book, that's what the message of the book is, Jesus Christ and his redeeming love. I know in the Old Testament, he's, he's not spoken of by the name of Jesus Christ. He's foreshadowed in types, and uh, somewhere in the shadows, there's Jesus, amen. In the Old Testament and the New Testament, both are all about Christ. Christ to come, Christ here, and Christ came. He died, was buried, rose again the third day, and he's at the right hand of the Father. I mean, that's the grand story of the Bible, isn't it? So we see that, and I, but anyway, we see he comes in the volume of the book, and, and let's continue on in verse 8. It says, Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein where are, uh, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which, well, I'm glad he did too, aren't you? Verse 10, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. No more sacrifice need be done. It's one time he did it. And he did it for who? For all. Once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. We're talking about those Old Testaments, all they could do is there was remission for sin, just held it off till next year. We had to come back in and all that. My friends, let me tell you, when Jesus Christ died on the Christ, died on the bloody cross of Calvary, uh, that he paid our sin debt absolutely in full. And the second we believe on him, trust in him for salvation, and uh, believing on him, trusting him, that sin is done away with, it's gone. Uh, I mean, it's absolutely is gone. And that sin debt, let me, let me rephrase that, that sin debt is gone. It's got, now that old sin nature might pop itself up in, our, in, our, in the old man. We might do things that are wrong and it's still sin. But thank God every bit of it was paid for on the cross of Calvary. And we have salvation through him, entirely through him. Verse 11 and, and every, oh wait a minute, verse 12. But this man after he that offered, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever sat down on the right hand of God. Wow. Let me, let me just read that again. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, why did it only take one? Because it was the perfect sacrifice. It's impeccable blood of Jesus Christ. No sin, no sin nature. The Son of God, 
born of a virgin. The very importance of the doctrine of the virgin birth is not conceived of sinful man. He's conceived of the Holy Spirit of God in uh, the womb of a virgin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth expecting till his from henceforth expecting until his enemies be made his footstool, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Who's them that are sanctified? Those that believe on him for salvation, that trust in him. How long are we perfected? Forever. Wow. I'm glad when he saved me, he saved me eternally. He didn't cleanse the sins away that I had done up to that point and then start taking score again. And then those sins would cast me eternal hell. Let me tell you something. That is a damnable heresy of teaching works salvation. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's all through the blood. It's paid for. We've got a lot to rejoice about, church. We've got a lot to rejoice about. If you're here today and you know Christ, your Savior, wow. Wow. He's so good to us. He's so much better to us than we deserve. We, we really get to go. We really get to go to heaven. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made. Oh, I've already read that. Verse 14. But let me read that again. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Uh, well, that's all I want to read over there. But Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. He gave, it, gave his all for us. Uh, we call it sometimes the supreme sacrifice, the life. What else can a person give? There's no more sacrifice than a person can give than his life. And, and he gave that for us. And, and verse 14 teaches that Jesus made the one offering, uh, the sacrifice for our sin, that we, that we who believe might have eternal salvation. Wow, man, just praise his holy name this morning. Ephesians 2, verse 8, the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Oh, wait a minute, back up. For we are his workmanship. It's his work. We're, we're his children because of his work. But what is it going to say? We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. And there ought to be a pattern in a child of God's life. There ought to be a, a change when a person, I, I, I don't know about all this salvation of somebody repeating a prayer and no change ever in their life. Salvation, according to the Bible, is a change of heart, believing on Jesus Christ and following after him and living a desire to live like him and live for him, putting self aside. But it says, for, for his workmanship created un, uh, in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. It was always his plan. He knew we would fail him as people. He knew before the foundation of the world that there would be a sacrifice made. He knew before the foundation of the world that Jesus Christ would be born of that virgin, uh, uh, come forth of that womb and would grow up and pay our sin debt on no bloody Calvary. And pay that, and he, he was desire and foreknowledge and, and those words of, of uh, predestination, when you look up and study those words, they've got to do with the work of God being done. It's pre, it's pre, he pre, we're predestined, those that are his children, we're the elect. Once we become saved by trusting in Jesus Christ, we're becoming the elect, not elected to individual salvation, but the election, that that would carry out the work of God for all eternity. Well, up until the catching away of the bride anyway. And there ought to be a pattern of that. This morning we're having communion, as you see the table set. Thank you for those that prepared that. In doing so, we'll remember and observe the sacrificial death of the darling son, observed spiritually, of course, speaking, of the darling son of God. This is not necessarily a salvation message this morning, as I often preach on Sunday mornings. But a challenge to us this Sunday morning that are saved. If you're here this morning, you've never been born again. I just want you to know Christ died for your sins. He paid your sin debt in full. And he'll forgive you entirely of your sin if you'll trust in him, just believe on him 
and ask him to come in your heart, forgive you. I say come in your heart. That's not a biblical phrase, but when you believe on him, uh, he does come in and abide in us. So that's where we get that phrase. After what he did, verse 15, let me read that again. Go back to, chapter, back to our text in chapter 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So after all he's done for us, shouldn't we sacrifice a few things for him? Some th sacrifice we should continue in. i just give you two or three this morning. Probably can continue on in this because there's a lot of things mentioned in the text. Maybe go a little further later this, or this evening at 6 o'clock. Verse 5 and 6 the Bible says, let, us con let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You know, uh, life's tough. We live in a tough time now. Uh, things have increased in price probably more than most people's paycheck reflects it. And man, for those that were living right on the edge of that um, before all this chaos hit in the name of COVID. Don't make no mistake, COVID didn't cause that. Men caused that. And greediness caused that. I know there's some extra expenses that was incurred, but you might better understand there was a master plan behind all that. But but what I'm just I'm just trying to say that things have gotten tough and it's 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 difficult right now. And man, families that are that are just getting by, and that's probably about 90% of Americans, I imagine. As I guess that's the same would carry through in here. Probably about 90% of us. There might be some of you has got a few mason jars buried back there. I mean, back, back there in your backyard. Or, or what they call old mattress money. Some of you might have some mattress money tucked away. Some of you smile, and that must mean I know who to go sleep when I need to borrow some money then. Cause they're thinking, you'll never find them. <laughs> I'm, I'm, te I'm teasing but I'm just saying, we, we, in our lives, we, we're, because of the world we live in, because of human nature desiring to please self, and, and just the world we live in, we, we get accustomed to stuff and more stuff and more stuff, and, and stuff is entirely too precious to us oftentimes. And when stuff goes low, a lot of times we start wondering, and if stuff even being, including money, mammon, the Bible calls it, uh, and stuff get a little bit sparse or scarce, however you want to say that, around the house and all that, we get, we get worried, we get frantic, uh, we get uh, fretting about it and just continue on and all that. But man, Bible, and, then, and, and then folks, the, the neighbor, you know, keeping up with the Joneses, but the, the, uh, you know, the neighbors get something better than we got. We feel like we got to match up to them. And man, that's cost us dearly, Hatton. I think it's cost our walk with the Lord. And covetousness, the sin of covetousness. It says, and be content with such things as you have, not only in the sin of, when, where the sin of covetousness is taking place, where we're trying to keep up with others and, and do with, like that and all, but just simply even in times when things are tough and things are low and, and the refrigerator ain't slap full and, show, and the bank account show ain't. Man, it's tough, but you know what? There's a, there's a contentment. If we're walking with the Lord, got our eyes in the right places, there's a contentment there that ought to be there that, you know what, if you're saved, you got Jesus. It don't matter how low that refrigerator's ever gotten in my life. It don't matter how low my bank account's ever got. And I just have to confess before you, I ain't, I'm not talking about recently necessarily and all that, but there have been times when it was a negative number in there. And I imagine, I'm not saying a show of hands, but I imagine about everybody in here being honest probably would raise their hand and say, me too, preacher. But you know what? We got Jesus. Why do we fret? when the light bill's a little higher than it was last month. And I understand why we do, because we feel it's our obligation as Christians and people who want lights down, but it's our obligation to have a good name and keep our bills paid and all that. I understand all that, but boy, when we've got Jesus. So verse 5 and 6, it says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be without content, be with content with such things you have. Uh, so much conversation is about the things we could have, the things we want, both things we desire. And man, have you seen that newest such and such and all that? All the while we got a great Savior abiding right in our hearts if you're saved. God, man, he's just, he's so good to us. And he says, as you, uh, such things you have, for, for he said, I will never leave thee, forsake thee. Look at verse 6. It says, so that we may boldly say, 
The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man should do unto me. Now, there's a lot more to that, but I just want to focus on for this first point. Uh, number one, the sacrifice we ought to make, number one, is in praising God. Say, preach, you always talk about you probably going to say something about holding your hands up. Yeah, I might say that. I don't know. The Bible says it. Why would I not preach the old counsel of God? Say, well, we don't do that around here. Well, maybe I'll try the Bible out. But my point isn't about holding your hand up or audibly saying amen uh, and those things. I, I like it. I like it when it's real. I like it when people ain't afraid to praise God and they mean much of praising God. But I like it when people are happy in Jesus, regardless whether they're audible or not. But, but if you're happy in Jesus, it, it's going to work itself out, I promise you. But in verse 6, it says, so that, it, it says, so that we may boldly say the Lord. So I want to stop right there and say, number one, well, to make a sacrifice in praising God, offer the sacrifice of praise. And it says the Lord. It starts off, says the Lord. And my point is for who he is. I, I'll get to more of that in a minute of what he's done. But simply, our greatest praise ought to be because he's a holy and righteous God that loves us. Now, oh, wait a minute. I said, because he loves us. We don't have to wait. We don't have to get to the things that he does for us. The fact that he's the omniscient, omnipresent. He's, he's the almighty. He's all powerful, everywhere, all knowing, gracious, all that he is. He consists of, he's the creator and sustainer of the universe. He knows who we are. He knows us. He knew us a quad, quad billion years ago. I don't know if that's a real number or not, but somewhere you run out of names for numbers. So somewhere you get where you got to have another name. So I just made another number up. But somewhere, I mean, somewhere way back in eternity before, before created all this as we see in the vastness of the skies, he knew who I would be. He knew who you would be. He's always known. And all the things he's created, all the things he's done from, from back in Genesis when he created all this. You know, he created trees. No, one day there'd be one of them cut down that his son would die on for my sin if yours. You ever thought about that? How much in his foreknowledge, I'm just saying we ought to, church, we ought to say the things. It says, it doesn't, start, it doesn't just say, uh, you know, just sing a, stand up and sing a hymn because the song leader said, too, nothing, nothing wrong with that. We ought to do that. So, so that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper. But simply we ought to praise him. And, and that's got to do with audibly. It says say. It doesn't say think. It says say it. Now whether it be in the congregation, praise the Lord. Whether it be at the grocery store. Now I catch myself doing this. I go back there and man I ain't cooked a brisket in a while. I've got one in the freezer. If I don't cook it's going to get freezer burned but they're so expensive. Now I hate to cook the only one I got and I kind of hate to go back and buy a $75 piece of meat to cook but, but man I miss cooking brisket. But man back, go back to that meat counter and all we catch yourself doing this. Folks be standing all around and say boy these price show are high but I wish I could get that over there and, and things like that and all and, 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 and complaining. Isn't that sad? We do. But I mean it's real though. It is. It's crazy what stuff costs now. It's, it's out of line. It's out of order. I don't like it either. But rather than praise God we live in a country got all that meat that we can eat today. Not today. You get sick. We've got all this, and we've got these stores full. You know how many people in other country, countries, can't, there's not even a store near them that has food? But praise God, I got back to the stuff again, didn't I, for being who he is. Listen to this. Let me give you a couple of verses. We'll move on. Psalm 22, verse 25, the Bible says, My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. So there's a, there's a praise in the sanctuary. A praising in the sanctuary. In Psalm 111, verse 1, Praise ye the Lord, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. You know what? Those two verses are where it's easy. When we come into God's house, it ought to be easy to praise the Lord, hadn't it? Man, it's easy to say hallelujah, praise the Lord, when our brothers and sisters but when we're at that meat counter looking at $85 brisket, or let me put it down to a much smaller scale, that $12 pack of drumsticks. Man, it's kind of hard for the flesh to say, praise the Lord. Well, don't do it from the flesh. Do it from the spirit and praise God anyhow. 
And I'm just trying to say we ought to just praise God because he's a loving God, a caring God, because he's God Almighty before anything he's ever done for us or will do for us, that he created all that we have, all that we get to enjoy, all we get to look at. I mean, he's just an amazing God. We'll wear our team colors, wear our team T-shirts, talk all day about them. Not only teams, you say, but you might say, well, I don't like sports. Well, most people have something. Uh, a lot of us guys like to rib each other about what kind of cars we drive and, and all that. You know what? And, and, I, and I know it's all in fun and all that, but we really ought to just be thankful for God that let us have a car, ain't we? Give us the ability to be able to drive a car. But I'm just saying we, 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 we do all these things and we'll, we'll spend a lot of time talking about our team and how great they are and the draft and all that kind of stuff. We'll talk, or whatever, uh, whatever thing it is that, that really doesn't make a hill of beans, we'll spend a lot of time talking about that and talk very little about Jesus. I was at a business yesterday and a lady working in there said something about I'm going to get up to Sunday or something. I forget how she worked exactly, but she said something about I'm going to get up and go to church and I'm going to worship my Jesus and I'm going to go home and rest the rest of the day. And I thought, man, for her to publicly say that, that I'm going to get up and go worship Jesus, I, that really, boy, that was pretty good, wasn't it? Church, he's worthy of our praise. I don't know why Christians are so scared to, pray, to praise him, to worship him. Hallelujah. He's a great Savior. He's an awesome God. But I do know why, because the flesh don't like it. The flesh is stuck to our traditions, what we think we like to do, what we've done before, or simply, I'm not, I'm not going to say amen out loud. I'm not going to do it. You know when you say amen, you know what biblically, you know what that is? You're agreeing to the thing that's said. Preachers say, God sure is a great God. He's amazing. He's a mighty God. He loves us so much. And amen is agreeing with what he said. I heard a preacher say this not long ago. He said, we come in our churches, and by the way, this pastor's church is a very loud church. I love it. They go to church, and he said, we come in church, bring our children in, and sit there, and the preacher says all kind of stuff. We're a Sunday school teacher, preacher, whatever, but we're talking about in saints, where's this preacher? Said all kind of great things about God, how great he is and all that. And a lot of it now to a child, think about it. You know, what do they hear about at Christmas time? What do they hear about at Thanksgiving? What do they hear about at Halloween time? What do they hear at all these holy days? What do they hear about all these things? It's really kind of hard things to believe. And the preacher gets up and talking about a virgin birth, resurrected on the third day, buried, is at the right hand of the Father. All these things that are not normal to the flesh to hear. And we just sit there and look at them. We stand up and sing about them like, I'm going to leave that alone right now. But when we say amen, you're agreeing with it. And you're teaching children that what he said is true. But when we come in and we're more worried about getting out, we talk about everything about it and everything we don't like and what we're doing at church you don't agree with and all that, talk about all the way home. By the way, the church that fellow pastors that said that has got multitudes and multitudes, family, generations, children, children's children, children's children. Because they saw mom and daddy worship God, believe God, trust God, and praise God. Rather than just the thing we do Sunday morning. At 11 o'clock. We ought to sacrifice and praise in God. Number two, looks like we have two points this morning. Thanking him for what he for who he is in verse six, so that we may boldly say, "The Lord." But then it goes on, and says, "Is my helper." It says that we may boldly 
say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do to me. But, but the fact, we ought to praise his name. Verse uh, Second thought there. In verse 5, it starts off, it says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be con- content with such things you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, never forsake thee. But we ought to give thanks to his name. And, and goes on and says that the Lord is my helper. We ought, to, we ought to give thanks to his name for, for what he does. I talked about for who he is, simply who he is. He's, he's, he's a great and almighty God. Uh, you know, some people narrow him down to as the supreme being. Well, he definitely is that too, though, isn't he? Just because of who he is. But, but secondly, this morning, back to the, the food in the refrigerator and the, and the cars we drive and the, the roof over your head and the shoes on your feet and the, whatever, whatever the, the whatever we can name this morning, the toothpaste that you brush your teeth with this morning, I hope. But we, we, we ought to praise him for what he does, had not it? It says in, a, in verse six, it's six, we see it says, the Lord is my helper. Man, I'm glad I'm helped by God. You know, it's good to have friends that help. Uh, I, I may have said this about one time, but a friend of mine one time, about 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the morning, called me and woke me up and said, uh, it was a 73 Dodge Coronet, Brother Bob. <laughs> called me and woke me up and he said, Jim, I, I'm so-and-so, wherever he was at. And he said, my Transmission won't go in gear. The linkage tore up. My, I'm, I'm stuck out on the side of the road. And I said, okay, I'll be there in a few minutes. You know what I did? Hung the phone up. That's back in the days when you put it back over on the thing, you know. And, man, I, I fell right back asleep. About the next day or two, I saw him, and, and uh, he ain't let me forget that since. I want to say, man, a failure. But I'm glad, I'm glad I got a helper that's never failed me. When it appeared he wasn't helping me, hear me now. When he appeared he wasn't helping me, it's because he's helping me a lot bigger than what I saw my need was. Thanking him for what he does. We ought to praise him. We'll get a blessing of some sort. Win the lottery. So I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Had to get catch, catch up, Brother Bryant. Uh, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I got it. Brother Bryant, you're going to like this too. Uh, I thought about it. This will, some of y'all that's in Sunday school this morning, you'll probably get a smile on your face when I read through this. Verse 5 mentions some things about having contentment, and verse 6 talks about being, being our helper. Listen to this, Jonah 2 9. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Now, the interesting thing is, and in preparing this, I smiled because I te- wrote out in parentheses, this was said from the belly of a whale. And I thought, as I was preparing this message, I thought, one day I'm going to mess that up and say that wrong. And thank you, brother, for taking care of that in Sunday school. Good job, brother. The, the whaley of a bell. I'm not sure what you said, but you, you twisted it up for us. But in, in the condition he was in, it says, but I will sacrifice unto the Lord the voice of thanksgiving. Giving thanks has to do with some things that he's done for us, and things he's going to do for us. So I'll pay that I, that I have vowed. Salvation is Lord. Ephesians 5.20, the Bible says, giving thanks always for all things. And God, and God, unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in all things. I, we're gonna, we'll move on tonight. I, I just want to say in verse 20 and 21 over in our text, uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll read those two verses it says, now the God of grace that brought again unto the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. So there's a, there's a, a notion there of him working in us. He desires to work in us and through us to glorify his name, that, that our life bring glory to his name, not just because of what we say, but because of how we live and how, where we, and how we care ourselves and such and things we do. So the third point that we'll start on tonight will be personal sanctification. What a sacrifice. Wow, what a sacrifice. A tough sacrifice. Personal sanctification. So we'll start with that tonight. I just want to ask you tonight, this morning, most important topic this morning is do you know that you know that you know that you've been born again? Let me, let me turn to a past script that came to mind when I said that. I always say that you know that you know that you know. In 1 John 
chapter 5. Let me read 11. It says, And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. So have you trusted Christ as your Savior? Is your hope in Christ? And this, this life is in his Son. That's where we get life, eternal life, through Jesus Christ. And it says, And that he, ha- he and that, I mean, I mean, he that hath the Son hath life. Do you have Jesus? Have you trusted him? Have you given your heart and soul to Jesus Christ? He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So when I say that I know I'm saved, that I know I'm going to heaven, Oh, my friends, it's not anything Jim Lane did. It's not any merit of Jim Lane because I know that stinker. But it's because Jim Lane's forgiven by the grace of God. And he paid my sin debt on the bloody cross of Calvary. And he paid it. And the Bible says, says that these things have I written. It's not just those two verses before that. It's the whole word of God that it's, it's all about redemption through Jesus Christ. These things are written that I have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. I'm believing on Him. He's my, he's my hope, my only hope. He is my hope. How about you? What is your hope? My friends, without Jesus Christ, without forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ, there's eternity in a place called hell that will eventually be cast into a place called the eternal lake of fire. Notice I said eternal on both of those. Because there's no getting out. There's no second chance. Have you trusted Christ as your Savior? My friend, don't leave here lost. Such a precious pride. I, I didn't plan on doing this. And uh, If you would come up, just play, and, uh, just play uh, some, uh, a few notes of a song of invitation. I just want to ask you this morning. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, won't you come to this altar? Come down here. I'll, I'll, I'll meet you down here with the Word of God. I'll show you how you can know your sins are forgiven. Trust Him. If you're female and feel more comfortable, there's two or three ladies here. Uh, be glad to come down and talk to you. Explain from the Word of God how you can be saved. What do you need to do this morning? We'll have another time before we say Lord's Supper, but if maybe you're here today and there's a burden on your heart. Maybe you got bitterness in your heart. Maybe something's going on and you just need the Lord to help you. Maybe in spite of all I said today about being content, what the Bible says about being content, maybe there's serious need in your life. God knows about it. Maybe he's just waiting for you to ask him to acknowledge that he is the provider of all that we have. Say, Lord, help me to be able to meet this obligation that we'd have food to feed our children that I could buy that set of tires that are wore slap out on my car. Why don't you come ask him for whatever you need? But above all, ask him forgiveness if you don't know him today. All eyes closed, please. I don't do this very often, but all eyes closed. Nobody looking around but me. Maybe you're here this morning. I, I just ask you, if, if you're not saved, but you're concerned about it, would you raise your hands? I'm not going to call you out. Nobody's looking around. But I want to pray for you. Is anybody like that today? Say, preacher, I'm not saved. Or maybe something like this. I'm concerned about my eternity. Is anybody like that here today? Raise your hand. Okay. What do you need to do? As she plays, some's come. If you need to come pray.
appreciate your attention uh, this morning. See there, Brother Bryant, your prophecy held true. Said I would be short. But at the same time, as I... let's take our Bibles this morning, turn to 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians eleven. Um, do we want to go get the children or somebody that the workers can come in? Now, this time, parents. Uh, I'm going to turn the children back to each parent. Let you watch them through this, and this doesn't take just a few minutes. And if it, we'll we'll work through it the best we can. God sure is good to us, isn't he? Amen. Maybe we should have sang a song or something. <laughs> I hear them. Well, maybe that those voices in my head. I reckon. <laughs> There they are. Hey, buddy. A dozen. Got to count. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I hear more. Fourteen, a baker's dozen plus one, right? Did you count that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, First Corinthians, when you find your place, I know you're just getting able to walk in. First Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to start reading at First Corinthians 11 at verse 23. The Bible says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, and there's a, a true case of inspiration, of God's inspiring. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, that the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is, of my, is my body, which is broken for you, this, uh, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. 
For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Um, we read, read through this passage there when, uh, if you read around in there, and most of y'all probably know there had been some problems. They would kind of got loose with the Lord's Supper and made it just more of a feast in time of maybe foolishness even and, and uh, made light of it. And Apostle Paul's kind of straightened them out, said this is what, the way we need to do it. It needs to be sincere, and this is why we do it and how we do it, and it's kind of. But the Lord's Supper is one of the two ordinances observed by the local church. An ordinance is something that's a physical thing that's a picture of a spirit of a spiritual as a spiritual picture, I guess I should say. Um, the other one is the believer's baptism. An ordinance is an outward duty prescribed by Christ to be performed by the church. Believer's baptism is the other only other ordinance in the New Testament church is submersion in water. The word baptize comes from a word that means, simply means to completely to baptize, to, to, get, to be submerged. But uh, anyway, it's been in water and bringing up out of the water. It signifies, it's a, a physical thing we do that signifies the death and the burial of Christ and the resurrection. Also, signifies the dying of the old sinner when we get saved and been washing the blood and coming back and walking in a newness of life and we ought to walk modeling our lives after him. Uh, believer's baptism also is prerequisite as a gateway into joining the church. It doesn't make a person a member of the church, but, but in the book of Acts in the first church, in the beginning of the church, uh, they, were, they believed they were baptized, and the Lord added them to the church. So there's a principle of baptized believers. The Lord's Supper is described in this passage in, in 1 Corinthians um, 11, in verse 24 and 25. It says, And when, we had given th- when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body that is broken th- for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after that same manner, he also took the cup when he when he, when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament, my blood, this do as often as you drink it, and do it, do it in remembrance of me. I butchered that a little bit, sorry about that. But, it, but we see there, he's, it, now he's speaking before he died, he, well, Paul, this red letters, Jesus, when he works, wrote those, was thinking, we're going to go there in a minute, Acts to Matthew 26, was speaking of what it was going to be fixing to do, down on the cross, but Paul's referring back to the fact that he's, already died for them. And for you and I today, we look back at what Christ did in this time of the Lord's Supper. It's a memorial time that we look back. And more if there's ever a time to say, thank you, Jesus, this is the time that we, in the purpose of the Lord's Supper, that we just think back on that, the agony he died in and the artist depictions, Hollywood or anybody else can ever accurately portray what he went through on that cross because all they can do is the outward part and they might come close uh, you know in, the, in, in some depiction they might could possibly draw a picture that looks something like he did or, or something I'm, I'm just trying to say but even if they could accurately draw it that's only half of what he's going through that day as he's bearing the sin of my sin and your sin and separation from the father when he when he look on him there on the cross of Calvary. So it's a look back. We reflect on what Christ did for us. He died in awful agony so we might live in joyful victory. Let's look forward in verse 26. It says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death. Those little three words, till he come. He's coming again. I believe he's coming soon. I don't know when. I, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'll be aware, I'm cautious of those that try to set a date other than just scripturally, a lot of time frames in the Bible have been fulfilled. And I, I just believe we're right on the brink of the soon return of Christ. A lot of folks sitting in the church, you pews going to watch their peers go and remain because they've sat and played religion all their life and never been born again. What a sad thought, but a true thought. But it's a look forward for those of us that are saved Man, it's a, even so come Lord Jesus. I mean, it, it ought to be a focus of our 
heart a lot of times is thinking on how sweet it'll be the day we see him. And whether it go by whether we go by the rapture or whether we go by the grave, those songwriters said we're a winner either way. And boy, I'm uh, I'm, I'm 59 years old. I didn't realize how old that was until I thought the other day was next year would be my, 20, uh, my 60th birthday. And then 20 years from now, I'll be 80. And 20 years from there, a lot less than I've been alive now, I'd be 100 if the Lord were to let me live that long. But I, but I say, I said all that to say that if it so be the Lord's lot for me, that he take me today, I know in my heart I'm ready to go. And it's an exciting thought to send him. Not, I'm not talking about the passage of death. That's a frightful thought. But the fact when I close these eyes, the next thing I see is when I open it back up, to be my Savior. So to look forward, we enjoy the warm comfort of the blessed hope, the soon return of Christ. Jesus coming soon. In verse 27 through 30, it says, Where, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. So we look back, we look forward, and we ought to look inward. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Now it says uh, some won't partake of it because they say they're not worthy. But the Bible says let a man examine himself so that they may. And for a child of God that we would, Lord, if there's any unconfessed sin, I've got anything I, well, if I'm, I'm short of, or, or maybe you probably do, no. So well, I've got this bitterness in my heart. I've got this, I... I did such and such or something bothered me. And Lord, I just ask you right now, just Lord, just, I, I pray that you just take that thing from me and, and just clean my slate fresh and anew today and make me worthy in your sake, for your sake, to partake of that that represents your blood and body. So with that said, it goes on and talks about some that have slept. They're sleeping. They're talking about some that died because they took of it unworthy. And it says you're making it a cursed thing. you uh, you, you bring a curse about yourself you, uh, when we take the Lord's Supper unworthy if a person were to just flippantly and that's why I'm careful to present the Lord's Supper it's just not a light thing that you just run in there and get you a little juice and toast and, and uh, run on out the door merrily in your own little way and all that I, it's a very serious time for the local church it's uh, uh, really a bonding time I mean it's a special time it ought to be a time that we're very sincere with the Lord so with that being said, if you have all in your heart, anything that you need to talk to the Lord about, you know those songs, just a little talk with Jesus, now is your time. And I would love to meet you in the altar. And, if there's, and certainly you can pray right there if you have physical reasons and all. Some of you may want to stay there. If you have your children there and all, rather than everybody be scattered and all, but every how you choose, whether it be right there, it's not the importance of the place of the altar not that the altar is not important, but it's more the position of the heart. So at this time, let's just take a moment and uh, examine ourselves and, and do things right. By the way, I, I wanted to read uh, in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I don't know about you, but I sure am thankful for that verse, aren't you? So the altar's open before we partake of it and uncover the elements and all. If you want to do business with the Lord, examine yourselves.
All right, is all hearts clear? Just trying to give time. I, I love the altar. I, I've uh, hope to teach you one day to make wise use of the offer, altar. Uh, if the deacons come forward. And, uh, Brother Vern, I know it's tough on you. I'm going to let these fellas but I was gonna identify you as one of the faithful deacons now, but we understand you. So it's situation will be hard for you. Appreciate you, though. I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 26, and uh, start in verse 26 through 30. The Bible says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of, my, of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. But in verse 26, he says, And they were eating, Jesus to, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples. So I'm going to ask y'all if y'all would to pass out the bread, this unleavened bread that represents the broken body of Christ, the unleavened, not having yeast that represents sin, representing the sinless, spotless Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If y'all would pass out that bread, me and Priscilla. Thank you, brother. How about you upstairs if y'all meet Brother Bob's where he don't have to go all the way up in the steps, please? Thank you. Kind of interested in that passage. Um, it says, and they, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it. Now, a man have not, doesn't have the ability to bless the bread, but God does. And when we ask the blessing, we're not blessing it, we're asking God's blessings. So I'm going to ask Brother Bob if you'd ask God's blessing for the bread on the bread.
Yes. Yes. Amen. He says, take and eat all of it. In verse 27, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, if you fellas, if you pass out the fruit of the juice that represents the blood. Fruit of the vine, what the Bible calls it, not fermented. Thank you, brother. Oops. Don't tell them I'm doing that one. As they're passing out, I realize I failed to say something I usually try to say that some may be in questions a little late in this now, but if there's questions on your heart, is if you're welcome to take it, if you're not a member of our church, if you're saved and believe in the cardinal doctrines of Jesus Christ, that he paid our sin debt and the salvation is by faith and the virgin birth and those things that really matter, if you believe in those things and agree with those things, you're welcome to receive the Lord's Supper with us. Sorry, I failed to mention that earlier. I meant to. I know parents often ask about children, little children that's not been saved yet or not old enough and all. I just say, let that be your opinion. If you want to serve it to them, let them eat it. I think they're under the, under the radar of not being accountable for something they don't understand. And hey, maybe it's a good opportunity to let them teach them, say, see what mom and daddy do. But that's entirely up to you if you let your children partake of it or not. Verse 29, it's, it refers to the fruit of the vine. And I point out it's, it's not fermented wine, it's, it's grape juice, just like they had that day. And, um, but then verse 27 and 28 says, And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So in the about the bread, it says they blessed it, and he said he gave thanks for it. So now let's give thanks and, of course, ask God's blessing. Brother Brian, if you'll thank God for this. Father, we do thank you for the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. He came and died on the cross for our sins. Lord, we just thank you that he rose again the third day. Lord, we just thank you for your love for us, the precious gift of salvation. Lord, this is what we do to remember what Jesus Christ did for us, and we just thank you for this opportunity to clear our hearts. In verse 29 and 30, it says, But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Um, in our hymn book, I just think it's always a fitting song and not the only song you could sing. I, I believe Jewish history would teach us that they sang some from the Psalms 113 and 118. I don't know what portions, but I think, uh, I don't know that tunes. I think Amazing Grace is about as good as any, is my opinion. It just gets the message so clear. Hmm. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you, brother. Okay, if you turn to page 130, we'll just do this acapella. Let's see. Uh, we'll just sing all five verses. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear The hour I first believed Through many dangers, toils, and snares I have already His grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good to me, His word my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures when we've been there ten thousand years Bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Amen. Appreciate everybody being here. Uh, I know it went a little bit long today, but it is a special day. We just do this about every quarter, so it's a special time and all. But go enjoy your day, and uh, we'll see you back hopefully tonight at 6 o'clock tonight. We'll continue on in this passage. We've got a few more things we can look at from there. Appreciate all of you. Appreciate the deacons helping and all that you do here at the church and all, but appreciate you. Let's be dismissed with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, God, for your goodness. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for living for us and dying for us and then being raised again at the right hand of the Father. God, help us today. Keep us safe. Be with us. Be with those that's physically not able to be here with sickness and different ailments, Lord. God, I thank you for those that might have watched by a live stream. Lord, I pray that you can work in the hearts of each hearer, including myself. God, Lord, we love you. Thank you for being so good to us. I pray that you'd help us. I pray for mercy on our land. God, for revival across America. God, watch over us through the day. God, we thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. And God's, all of God's children said? Amen. Amen.